Champions of Milk. Hey, yo, welcome back to the League of Milk. This will be my first pure build. It is a dex build. It's got very high vigor, vitality, the dex, and the endurance is moderately high, though dex weapons, a big reason why I always love them is not just the speed, but the fact that they're low weight and they don't use much stamina, which means it lets you cut a lot of corners in your builds versus using a strength weapon where you have to make a lot more considerations. So with a pure dex build, you have a lot of room to maneuver, and I was able to get the light roll again with very high vitality to get those nice flat damage uh, bonuses. I've almost got 150 damage cut off of every physical attack coming in, and pretty good absorptions, even though the armor is pretty light. That Leonard's Garb has good damage absorption, and as well as the uh, the shadow leggings, and then I've got the the two yellow slots on the chest and hands. If this build was going up to 120, you've got a few options. The simplest one is just take the decks up to 60. With the Chaos Blade, that would give you an extra 31 AR. And with the use of the Leo Ring during counters and Rypos with the Hornet Ring, you'd be getting, you know, those would, that extra 31 AR would be going through those modifiers and, and you'd get a lot more bang out of your buck than you'd think. Another really good option, and this would make it not really a dex build anymore, but if you are willing to sacrifice 3 Vigor and bring it down to 37, I know most people would, uh, you can bring that Endurance up to 40, and you could keep the Vitality at 30 there, and then you can bring the Strength up to 27. And what that'll do is it'll make the Composite Bow the best option for this build, as well as uh, quality weapons in a lot of cases. Um, or just uninfused weapons. Uh, so with that 27 strength when you were two-handing weapons it'll basically be acting like 40 strength so with quality weapons um, you'll be getting a lot better performance and the composite bow will also be getting that boost and bows are very powerful in PvP if used you know as a as a backup and used tactically and smartly. There you see, with an extra 20 and bigger, that would bring it up to 37. Another good option, and probably the one I would go with personally, would be the 50 dexterity. So a bit of a compromise there, but the Chaos Blade with the S scaling still gets a good boost. And the Vigor would remain at 40, and the Endurance would be right under that soft cap. And this build will specialize in using the Leo Ring and landing counterattacks, which is hitting an opponent during their attack animation with a thrust damage uh, type attack. To go with that Leo Ring, you're going to want weapons with great thrust damage type attacks. So my recommendations for that would be the Chaos Blade, as well as the Lothric Knight Sword. And under the bow, it says that it's got none type of attack unlike with weapons. However, if you go over and look at the arrows, that all bows deliver thrust damage type attacks on every attack they do. However, most weapons only deliver thrust attacks on certain uh, attacks. So with the Lothric Knight Sword, it would be things like the R2s, the Rolling R1s. Usually it's pretty easy to spot a thrust attack, though there are weird exceptions with that. For the armor, uh, I keep it very lightweight. For that 30% roll, this build relies a lot on spacing and pokes and you know getting the right range and getting the right opportunities to hit your opponent during their attack animations and as you do that you'll see that the opportunity for obvious parries uh, arise so it's also got that hornet ring fit in which is really important and that has the 30% boost to counterattack um, to ripost and backstab damage and the leo ring has the 15% boost to all thrust damage delivered during counterattacks. The Leo Ring is a must for the setups that I'm describing here. However, for PvE invasions or for mixing it up using other weapons like the Twin Scimitars or the Karthus Curve Sword, the Leo Ring might not be as helpful. It won't be applying to both your weapons anymore. So you can mix it up with the 
obscuring ring and other things like that. Um, I'm hard pressed to recommend something other than the Hornet ring, but the Life ring plus three version in particular is a, is a good option. It gives you a ton of health, and this build is already pretty tanky and good at avoiding damage. So you find that you're able to make quite a few mistakes and you know land a partial parry here or there and not feel the pain of it too much like you would on other builds where you're like oh my god this uh, now the complete dynamic of this duel has changed um that 1800 health is pretty nice however the the hornet ring is just ridiculous right now and this build is so good at setting up your opponents for an easy parry that I'm hard pressed to recommend anything else. But the Claranthi Ring, I really recommend again. Even though we've got the Endurance again, this build relies a lot on spacing and you want the most out of that, that roll potential, that long roll potential that this build offers. So keeping that Claranthi Ring, keeping the pace of the fight where, where it needs to be and being able to keep up with it at all times is pretty important. Uh, and with the Ring of Favor and Protection plus two, it's almost like an extra six points in endurance, so it's a nice chunk of stamina there. So the build, the build is very, very mobile and able to react to different situations like it needs to be for a build that plays off of counters. And playing for counters, it's something that might draw hate sometimes, but it's a, a very effective way to PvP. And this is a good build for learning the ins and outs of PvP. And one thing worth mentioning is that Different arrows use different amounts of stamina. Large arrows use the most stamina, naturally. They do the most damage as well at 55 AR. And then standard arrows use a little bit, well, actually quite a bit less stamina. However, they lose 10 AR off of those large arrows, which isn't really a big deal. Um, so that's a good option, possibly. And it's worth noting the wood arrows use very, very little stamina. Uh, so the only reason, I think the, the most important reason this would come into play is if you're building a low level dex build and, and you're cutting corners with the endurance, this would be a good way to keep up the pressure, keep up the pokes without using a lot of stamina and, and sacrificing your mobility and being able to keep your spacing as well. So... This is more the setup I run for just kind of general stuff. I like to have the hood, but the stats are so tight right now um, that I have to switch to the life ring for that. But the hornet ring isn't super useful in PvE anyway. So I hope you enjoy the build, and I hope you enjoy these duels coming up. So I'd like to showcase just a couple duels against different styles of players and weapons. and how to approach each one. Now with the counter build, you do want to try and let your opponent open up uh, because it's going to rely a lot on, on reading people. And I'd like to mention I would not have taken out my bow if this guy wasn't using so many ranged attacks. Usually the bow is something you want to keep in your back pocket until the fight is very near to done, to where they need one to two arrows, uh, maybe three, to kill them. Um, it's just such a good tool for ending fights, and the ends of fights can be so tricky, so annoying. Uh, all players change their tactics when they get very, very low on health, and if you can just surprise them with a, an extremely fast ranged attack and, and just quickly finish them off, it's a good thing. And you see there, the bow is such a good good tool for baiting players into an obvious R1, um, running R1, what have you. And once you, you know, get, a, get the hang of pairing the different weapon types, um, it's just a, a great way of, of setting people up for those parries. Parries are hard to land. I mean, I'm not the best at it, but it, it becomes a lot easier if you know what your opponent's going to do beforehand. And you see with this build, even though they've got their buff, uh, I'm willing to trade. Oh my god. That was a hard hitting counter. So you can see that with the Leo ring and a charged R2 and a counter, 
the damage multipliers just go nuts, and you can do some pretty intense damage with even a fast weapon. And I really, really like the Chaos Blade on this build because it's got that long R2, it's got the running R1, which is incredible. Um, the Lothric Sword is great, but it doesn't have a thrust damage running attack. And we all know Katanas have a pretty good thrust damage running attack. So I think it's the best option for this build, to be quite honest. Uh, the sword is, is quite good too, and I was having a lot of success with it. I, I think I'm going to put up another dual video with just the sword. It's a pretty stylish weapon too. I, I like the design of the, the Lothric Knight Sword. So with this build, against a lot of weapons, you don't have to be afraid to trade. Uh, and if someone's hunting for parries, you know, charge up those R2s and just roll the dice. People miss those parries on charged R2s a lot, miss their rolls on them a lot, uh, and they hurt a lot with this build. And the running R1s hurt a lot too. I mean, if you time your attacks during theirs and they're, and they're swinging wild and you've got more range than them with something like that curved sword there, those short range curved swords, with... Um, with the Storm King Curve Sword and the Karthus Curve Sword, you have to be a lot more careful. But with all the others, you've got a nice, nice range uh, advantage on them with this Chaos Blade. So you can really play them almost like you have a spear in your hand. I, f I forget to heal at the beginning of duels a lot. <laughs> anyway, so you do not outrange Fume Knight Swords. Um, so I don't know if y'all saw the Dexluck bleed build. And there you see, when somebody's hunting for those parries, just charge those R2s up. Um, there's a chance they'll get it. There's a chance. But it's a lot harder to get the timing for it because you can vary it if you want. You can release it early if you feel like they're so pro that they've got it charged out. Oh, and there's some bad spacing. Um, so that's something you just have to get the hang of. Uh, the range of the weapon. I, I'm still, I haven't really used the Chaos Blade much, um, but that's just something that yeah, that's gonna happen, but the build is so tanky that mistakes can happen. Uh, and with Ultra Weapons, you just, you wanna fight that Battle of Attrition with their stamina. That's what your Chloranthi plus two is for. That's with what your highly efficient weapon is for. You don't have more range than them. You don't have more power than them, so you can't trade even with your thrust attacks. So you just kind of use up their stamina, and then you get the punishes. And like I said, when they get low on health, that's when you switch to the bow. Um, it's a it's a really nice surprise. And the rolling attacks are great, but this is the old Dark Souls one method kind of where you just you just hold the shot and it's a very fast attack. You just kind of wait for them to roll up and then you can get a trade. But I was a little bit afraid to do it with a weapon this big. I think I'd do it in another video. Um, so you just kind of vary your tactics based on the weapon. I do some poor, poor spacing there uh, and firing off of that shot. But, you know, you just, you do have to kind of play the distance game. You do have to trap them in an animation. It's not so quick that you're going to and the tracking's not that good that you can hit him in a roll. I hope you enjoyed the vid. Thank you very much for sticking to the end. I plan on making many other vids like it. Interesting builds and such. Uh, so please click to subscribe here on the right if you're interested in more of the same. And I will also be putting up a Lothric Knight Sword dueling video with the same build. And that'll be over here on the left. So I, again, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much again for sticking to the end. And I hope you're having fun with the game. I'm going to bed. <laughs>